this? This is the Mighty Gorga. I'm not sure if you can tell, but this is a very subtle ripoff of King Kong. It's about a bunch of explorers that are in desperate need of treasure. So they go off to this crazy island place where there's this evil giant gorilla. He loves to destroy things and fight dinosaurs. Ooh, I gotta tell you, this looks hilarious. I haven't seen it yet. I'm about to. And I'm gonna go check it out and review it and I'm gonna tell you, I know for a fact that this is gonna be right up there with the likes of, say, Birdemic, Troll 2, or The Room. And I'm so excited that I'm gonna be one of the first people to review it, so come on, let's go! Oh... I was wrong. I was very, very wrong. That was not nearly as terribly awful and amazing as The Room or any of those other movies I mentioned. No, this was... This was a headache. This is... Wow. Here we are thinking that this is going to be one of those Terabad Titans everybody loves. One of those things that you're going to watch again and again with your friends, laughing at all the inconsistencies and mistakes, but no. The Mighty Gorga is in fact one of the most boring movies I have ever seen in my entire life. First of all, I have to come right out and laugh at the name, The Mighty Gorga. I'm not saying Gorga is a dumb name or anything, it's just kinda eh. But why name the movie after something that only appears for six minutes? Yeah, that's right. Gorga barely appears in this film, and guess what? He doesn't contribute anything to the story. All that really happens is he shows up and he's quote-unquote menacing for a while, and then he presumably kills the main villain, but we don't really know. Honestly, if Gorga wasn't in the movie, it would be absolutely no different whatsoever. And it goes without saying that the costume that the guy's wearing, because yeah, it's a costume. I'm not sure if you can tell, it's a pretty well-made costume, but it's still a costume nonetheless. And I'm gonna drop all sarcasm here, it looks hilarious. The fact that his eyes are so wide and derpy and that he can't close his mouth, it's hilarious. And honestly, the six minutes where Gorga is on screen are the only parts of the movie worth watching because everything else, not so much. So let's look at our main characters. There's this guy. I don't know his name and I don't really care, so I'm gonna call him Mickey. Mickey is a guy who works at a circus. And he wants the circus to stay in business because this evil tycoon is trying to buy them out. This is never mentioned again. So what do you think's gonna happen? Do you think they're gonna go to quote-unquote Skull Island and get the Mighty Gorga to be one of their attractions like in King Kong? No, they're going off to this Skull Island knockoff so they can get treasure. Gorga, once again, has nothing to do with the film. But he's accompanied by his two friends. This African-American guy who disappears halfway through the film only to come back at the very end. I don't know his name and I don't really care, so I'm gonna call him Xavier. Xavier has no personality, barely talks, and contributes nothing. Honestly, I don't know why he's here. And then there's the girl. Once again, don't know her name, don't care, so I'm just gonna call her... George. George is sort of an amazing character. Not saying she's interesting or anything, because she's most certainly not, but she has this accent that keeps changing throughout the entire film. It goes from an English accent to Welsh to Scottish to sometimes, like, I don't even know, some kind of mix between a Swahili and Spanish accent? I, I don't even know, but here's some clips. Tried to buy me out. And when I turned him down, he took half his money in livestock and went downstream to open up his own compound. Well, that depends on the last safari that came into the region, and there haven't been many. Oh, Mark, I just thought of something. If Dad came his way and slipped like I did just now, he had no one to help him. You want to capture that giant ape, and Morgan wants the treasure, and me, well... I need your money to pay off Morgan. Great, great acting right here. I am so happy I watched this movie. A lot of the film is just Mickey and George meandering without a purpose or any direction. I'm honestly convinced that there was no director on set. I think he just kind of said like, Alright, you guys do this and this and then I'll go see what's going on at the singles bar and I'll catch you later. There's this one scene in particular where Mickey and George are just rock climbing up a mountain and it goes on for like two minutes and they just keep staring at the camera going all right is it done is it done can we be done now please i hate this and it goes without saying that the plot makes no sense of course there's the dinosaur island thing but they don't ever draw attention to it 
the prehistoric plant life and all that never comes back. There's this evil gold digging guy who comes in at the end of the movie who I'm gonna call the Jibbler. He just starts shooting people and then he dies himself. There's also this tribe of... Okay, this is one of the biggest parts of contention between me and Billy here because we can't agree what race these guys are supposed to be. They're obviously not the race they're supposed to be, they're just white people pretending to be them. But we can't tell, are they Native Americans? Are they Mexicans? Are they African tribal warriors? We can't really tell. And the movie isn't very clear about it either. They keep changing what race they're supposed to be every single time. Now I know the way I'm describing this film makes it seem hilarious, but please, I beg of you, don't watch it. It's not funny. Really, when you're watching this thing, it's just a headache. It is in no way enjoyable unless Gorga or the T-Rex puppet is on screen. Nothing else. We were having a great time watching it at first, but then a third of the way through, we realized that the amateur cinematography and the wooden acting were all the enjoyment we were gonna have. Gorga wasn't showing up, none of the characters were funny enough to make it worth it, and the dialogue wasn't something like in The Room or Birdemic where it's so unbelievably terrible that you can't believe this ever made it to screen. It's just bland and boring. Without Gorga or the T-Rex puppet, this movie would be 100% unremarkable. And I mean that in every single way, even it being a King Kong ripoff, because there are so many of them out there. When King Kong was as big of a hit as it was, everyone wanted to make their giant ape movie, even Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, even Tarantino wasn't above ripping off King Kong. So what makes Gorga stand out? Absolutely nothing. I get it, we all want to find another Fateful Findings. We want another one of these movies we can all point and laugh at. But Gorga isn't it. Not even close. I have been waiting to watch this movie for five years. But because the DVD is so rare, we weren't able to watch it for a long time. But then, for me to mementos, because of our Patreon, link in the description below by the way, we finally found the resources to get the last DVD available on Amazon. At least, at the time we bought it. Then we sat down to watch it, and were blown away by how disappointed we were. It literally depressed us. We had no motivation to do anything for the rest of the day. And I'm not sure what hurt more, the fact that this was so boring and useless, or the fact that we've been waiting this long to watch it, only for it to absolutely suck. Normally, this would be the part of the review where I break out some kind of inspirational speech like, Oh yeah, they did a lot with very little. They tried their absolute hardest. But no. This doesn't have anything like that. Nobody tried. The actors were clearly bored the whole time. Everything was done in one take. The director was not present or non-existent. And the special effects crew? Yeah, no. I guess the only thing that can be said about the Mighty Gorga at this point is don't listen to everybody online. For the select few that know what the Mighty Gorga is, they'll tell you it's hilarious, it's amazing, don't listen to them. I can promise you that half of them haven't even seen it. You know, I first heard about the Mighty Gorga from Stuart Ashen when he made this video about the top five worst movie monsters. Gorga was number one, but in hindsight, I should have listened to him more closely. He only talked about the costumes and practical effects. Nothing else. Yikes. So if you actually are curious and want to watch this movie despite everything I've said, well, I'll help you. I really will. I'm gonna have my editor put together every single good scene from the Mighty Gorga and we'll post it separately. I don't know when, but we're gonna do it. I bet it'll only be like eight minutes, maybe. This just goes to show that some lost movies need to stay lost. And don't even get me started about 1 million ACDC. For those who don't know, the Mighty Gorga's DVD also comes with that. There is no way we're reviewing that. Not a chance. First of all, we'd get demonetized like that. And second, what can you really say about this thing? Honestly, it was hard enough to talk about Gorga. So yeah, the Mighty Gorga does not live up to the hype, is not enjoyable on its own, and honestly, if you see six minutes of it, you're set for life. I kind of feel bad now. Billy now has the DVD and it's part of his collection, but I don't think he's ever going to watch it again. So, uh, yeah, that's fun. Well, folks, thanks for watching the video. What'd you guys think? Have you seen this movie? 
What are your favorite So Bad They're Good films? Comment below and let me know because I'm always excited to hear what you guys have to say. Real quick, I'd like to thank our Patreon executive producers, Reziel, Lee Fraser, Azarius, Michael Bellamy, and MD the Dude. If you two would like your name read right at the end of every Meet and Mementos video, then consider donating to our Patreon, which has a link in the description below. And now, it's time for the comment of the day. This one's a little bit longer than normal, so I hope you can bear with me. Trust me, it's worth it. Today's comment of the day goes to Michael Bradshaw, easily two of the show's most underrated characters. He's talking about read and run, by the way. Excellent video. All of your observations were spot on. It's a shame Reed and Runt never got more Spotlight episodes, and I'm still hoping they'll come back in Season 3. Reed and Runt's adventures were a welcome break from the zany comedy. Both were, slash are, endearing characters and their songs were outstanding. I couldn't agree more. I honestly don't think they'll ever come back because they weren't nearly as popular as, say, Pinky and the Brain or even Slappy Squirrel, who I'm also surprised didn't come back, but anyways. We record these comment of the day things a day or two before the videos get released. So I can tell you, I'm really surprised with how many people watched the video and said that they completely forgot who they were or didn't know their names. Not that that's anything wrong, I'm just saying that proves our point that they need a lot more attention. So, I fully agree, Rita and Runt are amazing. And now, it's time to finish the video. Thanks for watching everybody, and I'll see you guys next time with something that's not this.